Good day everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Once again, I am Adekunle by name. In case you find the information in this video useful, don't forget to subscribe and share to your people so that they can also gain in this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about the various scholarships in China for postgraduate students. The reason I am doing this very early because the application period will start by January, December to January, but many people do not know the documents that will be used for this scholarship. So I'm making this video as early as possible so that you will be able to get those documents ready and by then it will be easy for you to apply by yourself without visiting anybody or without asking any agent to do it for you. Now, I will be listing the university scholarship and other government scholarships that will be available by, by that January to April. Many of the scholarships, especially the government scholarship, start by January and end by March. That is why everything that you need to get ready, you must get those things ready now. The very first university I'm going to mention is Chinese Government Bilateral Scholarship. We call this type of scholarship Type A, CSC Type A. In my previous video, I discussed about the two types of this Chinese government scholarship. As I have said, I said we have type A and we have type B. Both are full funded scholarship. The reason we call one type A and another one type B is that the, type, the, the agencies that are responsible for nominating students are different. That is why we call them type A and type B. So this type A, the, 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 it is a bilateral scholarship that is the agreement between China and other countries. So the nominating agency for this scholarship could be your government or the Chinese embassy in your home country. Now, it now left for you to search how it, they operate it in your country. If it is your government that will nominate or the Chinese embassy in your country that will nominate so find your own do your own research about that and apply comes January but this type A the time frame is different some countries start around December some starts around November some starts by January so it depends just find out the information in your home country and get things done by yourself the second scholarship is Chinese Government Scholarship CSC Type B. This one, the nominating agency is the university you are applying to. That is, yours is just to apply online, send your document to the school, then wait for the results. The school you are applying to will be the one to nominate and send to the Chinese government. That is that about Chinese government scholarship type B. We call it university program. The third scholarship is Marine Scholarship of China. Not all universities has this scholarship. The, the list of the universities that, that gives this scholarship are Xiamen University, Zhenjiang University, Ocean University of China and Tongji University. They are four universities that offer this scholarship. Now, the fourth one is Ministry of Commerce Scholarship. We call it MOVECON. Now, it is the Economy and Commercial Counselor's Office of your home country that will nominate you for this. This, this means that you don't have anything to do with any uh, universities in China. Yours is just to go to the embassy, the economy counselor of your, I mean, economy and commercial counselor's office 
of your home country and ask the process of applying for this. We call it MoveCon Scholarship. The fifth one is Chinese Trade Union Silk Road Scholarship. This is also a full scholarship and you are to sub you are to submit the application form to the Chinese website, Chinese government scholarship website as well. The last but not the least is university scholarship. This scholarship varies. Some have a local government scholarship, this kind of scholarship, but this one, the, the one that is very common in Chinese, scholar, Chinese university scholarship is called presidential scholarship. This one also is a full scholarship, but the stipend for this scholarship is different from the stipend that will be offered by the CSC scholarship. It also offers all other things that Chinese government scholarship offers, but the difference is the uh, monthly stipend that will be given to you. I hope you like the list of those scholarship. I will drop the list in the description box so that you'll be able to lay your hands on it, you can make your further research about it. Now, I'm going to discuss about the documents that you will need, which is the main focus of this video. The document that you should get ready for the forthcoming scholarship are one, the notarized copy of the highest diploma you have, that is you have BSc, you have BSc and you are going for MSc, that is your BSc certificate. You have MSc and you are going for PhD, that is your MSc certificate. So you must have the certificate, then notarize it by the, uh, you notarize it anywhere in the high court or by uh, in the notary club or look for a lawyer to notarize your highest diploma for you. The second document is your academic transcripts. If you are going for master's, you need BSc transcript. If you are going for PhD, you need MSc transcripts. Also, you must notarize those ones too. The third one is a study plan. We call it study plan. Study plan is meant for both MSc and PhD candidates. You are to write this in accordance to, your, the, to the course that you are going for. It must reflect the the course you are going for in China. You must say everything about it. The process of writing this study plan will be given in the forthcoming videos. Now, the next one is two recommendation letters. This one should come from your previous professors. Two of your pro, uh, previous professors. Just meet two of them. They should write the recommendation letter for you which you will use to augment your application. The next document is foreign physical examination form. This one you will have to download it online or maybe on the school portal or on uh, Chinese government portal. So it may vary, it's different but the content must be the same. Yes, the content must be the same and all the test that is being put in the, uh, in the physical form must be done by you and must be stamped. The next one is test of English certificate or HSK. If you are going to China for MSc or PhD and your course will be offered in English, you need to present a uh, test of English certificate, whether TOEFL or IELT. But if you are from English speaking country like US, UK, Australia and, and Co, you do not need this. Uh, or if your undergraduate or your previous education was conducted in English, you don't need this. Just go to your last university, ask them for a letter that will claim that your your education or your schooling was conducted in English. Now, this letter is what you will use to supplement a test of English certificate. But if you are coming to China for, if your course will be conducted in Chinese language, you will need HSK certificate. Instead of test of English certificate, you will need HSK certificate. Now, the next document is police character certificate. 
so you have to get this one too in three years ago four years ago it was it, it was not requested but as at two years ago last year and co they started requesting for this to to augment your document for your application another document you need is your recommendation letter from chinese professor yes this one is very very and highly needed for phd students if you are going to china to to study phd in any course you have to peruse the internet uh, the the website of the school you are going check the list of the professors contact the one that has the same research area with you then you contact them write a proposal then send them message to be to recommend you for the scholarship they will give you letter of recommendation you need it but msc i for what we have seen not all school request recommendation letter from msc students not all schools i can say maybe 50 percent or 45 percent of schools request for this uh, recommendation letter from MSc, but for PhD, it is very, very required. Now, the next one is birth certificate. For, Niger for Nigerians, you need MPC certificate. Now, the next document is research proposal. This is high, highly recommended for you to get down. You may not know which school you are applying to, but once you get the list of the school and you see that they request for a research proposal, both MSc and PhD, you have to get it ready before that January so that everything will not be too tedious for you. The last but not the least is your international passport, which is highly, highly needed. Don't forget, please, in case this video meet your requirements or this video is useful for you kindly subscribe to my channel like it you can put your request on in the comment box and share to your fellow people so that people also can gain from this insight because many people do not know that they can actually apply for scholarship themselves they thought they have to go through somebody or through anybody no it is it, it, it is a very simple thing just that it depends on how you package your application and don't forget you are that you are competing with people around the world so you have to package your document get those documents ready now after you've gotten them ready then cross your leg and wait till december stroke january that the application period will start then you start applying yourself thank you